Let's clear up a couple things. Borders do add to the size of an element. As you increase the border width, things get bigger. But the exception here is when you've set specific dimensions on an element. If you have a width or a height, those values lock those dimensions, meaning borders won't always add to the size. Now, why does this matter? It doesn't, except it does, because borders are used all the time. Because we're going to cover all sorts of border controls. We'll do border fundamentals, radius, styles, width, color. We'll cover shapes like capsules, ellipses, circles, and how to use object fit to create consistent circular images out of different aspect ratios. We'll do sides and edges, bevels, and we'll end with animated transitions. Let's start with borders. And we can add a radius to control rounding. This applies to all four sides. By default, it's pixels, but we can also use percentages and other units. We'll cover that later in shapes. But the big thing here is that we can also set rounding on specific corners. If we wanna clear it out, we can just reset. And by default, the border style isn't defined. None is obviously no border, but we can choose other styles too. And these become more obvious when we set a width. One pixel is the default and we can see the results in real time right on the canvas. What about color? Set a color, now the border has a color. That's border basics, let's get into shapes. A few tricks here. For a capsule, a pill shape, all we have to do is set our radius to a larger pixel value. Since it's radius, it has to be larger than half the element's shortest dimension. If you don't wanna do the math, a larger number like 500 usually works okay. For ellipses, more of an oval shape, we can use 50%. In fact, percentages are going to base themselves on the width and height of an element. But keep in mind, when you have a bunch of elements with different dimensions, ellipses can appear inconsistent. And what about circles? Well, this requires a ruler and a trip to the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. But as an alternative, you can do the same thing we did for an ellipse and use 50%. But just ensure the element you're styling has a width equal to its height. They need to be the same. So then how do you make an image circular? Well. We can select this image, which is square, and set its radius to 50%. But what about this one? What about this image? This is where we can use radius and object fit to perform a magic act known as image inside div block. And by default, a blank div block doesn't really have dimensions. When we put the image inside, it becomes as large as the image. But here's where the fun starts. We can select the div block. Let's create a class called image holder thing. And let's set its dimensions, set a width, set a height equal to the width. And once we do that, we set two more things on the image holder thing. Radius to 50%, that'll make it circular since the width and the height are equal. And overflow hidden. This is going to hide any part of the image that's overflowing outside of our new circle. As for the image itself, with the image selected, we're gonna do two more things. One, we're going to set its width and its height, both dimensions here, to 100%. And two, we can use object fit. We can fit the image to cover the space available inside our circular div block. And if we want, we can position it. We can anchor it to a corner, or in this case, we can just anchor it to the center. But those are some basic shapes we can create with radius. Capsules, using a pixel value as the radius. Ellipses, using percentages. And circles, ellipses that have equal values for width and height. And we can do more. Let's create some weirder shapes with sides and edges. Sides, this means breaking our border properties up into individual sides. Obviously, this means we can set each of them one by one. So on the top one here, we can set a border for that. We can always go back to adjusting all sides at once by just clicking in the middle. Maybe we want them even for now, but we can also go back to styling individual sides to make a more specific change. We'll just add some weight to the left border here. But what about border radius? Same deal here, we can break it out into four corners, set the top left to 20%, top right to 50%, bottom right is 50 pixels, we can mix values here, and the bottom left is 50%. Now, we can play with this, we can tweak values and create all sorts of weird things by manipulating individual edges and sides, but what happens, by the way, this is bevels, what happens when we have four sides and we start changing colors on only some of them? Well. We spoiled that because this section is called bevels. We're just adding a border here. Let's do this sort of grayish color. We can always change this later. And let's set the border width to something like 10 pixels. 
Once we do, we can go right in and start modifying one of the sides. On the left, let's pick a different color. And now we have a bevel. So what's happening here with all borders is that when sides intersect, they create diagonal lines based on the border width of each side. You can change that angle by changing the border width of either of the sides. But that's beveling. What about animations, animated transitions? Well, as we know, we can style anything in the style panel. We can switch over from none to hover. This is what shows up when someone hovers. So on hover, we can add some rounding. We can set a radius on our class here. So now when we hover, it goes from rectangular to, well, it's still rectangular, but the corners are rounded. And on these types of things, we can go back to none. We can leave hover and add a transition. And when we go to do that, let's go down and add our transition. We have to select the property that's changing. The property is border radius because we just shifted the border radius on hover. So what does that do? It transitions between our none and hover state. And when we move our cursor outside of the button, it animates back. But it's not just hover. In fact, we can go back over, let's go into our hover state and remove the property. Let's go in and reset the property altogether. Instead, Let's go over to pressed, our pressed state. If we do this, we can add something to our radius. Let's do maybe a smaller value here. And now when someone visits the page, hovering over the button does nothing because we removed that. But when we click, we get this visual feedback by animating the radius. We can also animate things like the border color. We can have one or multiple border colors change. We do this by adding a transition for border color. We can animate the border width itself, which at times can look comical. And of course, we can delete our project entirely from the dashboard. But that's it. We covered border basics like radius, styles, width, color. We did shapes, sides and edges, bevels and animated transitions. What we didn't cover was how Greamer was going to end this video. And knowing his sense of humor, there's a fairly high probability that this sentence doesn't